20 years ago, on September 11th, Tim Bondi watched a perfectly blue sky turn gray with ash within a matter of seconds. She experienced the devastation in real time from a CNN control room. Back then, Kim was vice president of Morning News, which meant she had to juggle the jaw-dropping realization that her country was under attack with her professional obligation to present the story accurately to viewers, as depicted in Hulu's 9-11 One Day in America documentary. In the middle of all of the trauma, panic, and confusion, she had to work, which is no easy task. But two decades later, that experience has given Bondi a unique perspective. As a journalist, she covered the attack for seven consecutive days and would continue covering it for the months and years that followed, all while personally trying to make sense of something she thought she would never, ever see. And joining me now is Kim Bondi. Kim, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Of course. Happy to join you. Thank you. So can you describe the moment as a journalist and news executive that you realize, oh, wait, this is a terrorist attack happening right now? Well, you know, Zerlina, I had just moved away from New York and working at NBC uh, at the Today Show. And so I was brand new to Atlanta, but I knew New York really well. And so when someone, Edith Chapin, one of our executives said, uh, you know, a plane has hit the tower. I watch everybody get up from a morning meeting, walk down to the control room, and the minute I saw the monitors uh, and the you know the control room video coming, I knew that we were in trouble. But it wasn't until the second tower, the second plane hit the, the second tower, that we realized that oh my goodness, this is terrorism, um, and we knew that our lives would you know, would be forever changed. But you were right. It was a beautiful day in New York. It was the first day of school. So a lot of people hadn't gone into work yet uh, in New York. And so the idea that within minutes, all of our lives would change, but particularly the place that I love so much, New York City, would be so, you know, would be devastated. And then for us to collectively have to pull ourselves together and now cover this thing, and we didn't quite know what it was uh, until that second plane hit that we realized that here we go, we are in it, we're really going to be in it forever with this one. I think on this 20th anniversary, I'm having a lot of conversations um, uh, with people who were very young at the time of, uh, of the attack um, or weren't even born yet. Um, and one of the things mm -hmm. I think, you know, folks. Uh, are trying to get their heads around today is the fact that, to your point, you didn't know what was happening in real time. And then when you realized it was a terrorist attack, it was like, what's going to get hit next? In that chaos, how were you able to separate yourself mm -hmm. as an American, understanding the country's under attack, and being a journalist and being able to focus on the job at hand? Zelina, you know this so well from your experience, but when you are working in journalism, you have the, the prism of, of, you know, news coverage to sort of hide your emotions behind. I had it happen with 9-11. I had it happen again with Katrina in my hometown, where you are so focused on getting the story right. And, you know, you're at the center of, you know, the biggest story ever. I've been in that position a number of times in my career. And so what's always interesting to me is it gives me a little bit of distance. And because you are working on behalf of everybody globally around the world, trying to get that information, you just deal with your grief and your emotions later on. You know, it's paramount to not put yourself at the, at the middle of the story, but it's to you know, do your job which is to get the information in a very careful way and to help America cope through this, right? We, it was the first time that I witnessed in my career journalists, fellow reporters and anchors literally crying on the air. And I knew that if I was going to lead, lead coverage and that we were going to be in this for many, many weeks to come, that I needed to keep myself composed, that I needed to be a leader in that moment and to support 
support everybody. But what I saw as I looked around the control room, which in that in those stories is your universe, I had never seen fear in everyone's eyes the way that I witnessed that day. And 20 years on and looking at that picture, I still have that same feeling of, my goodness, what is happening here in our world? In the last minute, I, I just want to sort of get your reflection on how news coverage has evolved. I mean, obviously, we now have social media. We have cell phones with cameras on them. Um, and we have the 24-hour news cycle, uh, which was still new, new-ish, uh, back then. So mm -hmm. speak to how we've evolved. You know, I think there've been some good things that have come out of it and bad I mean, technology. I think that with the pressure of social media, there's a lot of pressure to get video out there, get the story out there, to be the first. Um, and a lot of things go unvetted. One of the things that we had in 9-11 and I was, you know, across the board, all of our colleagues, my former colleagues and family at NBC News, mm -hmm. every news organization is that Everybody slowed down. We really wanted to get the story right. We had the benefit of not having to compete. It was everybody's story to tell in the right way. It's so important to think about all of these lessons of 9-11. Kim Bondi, I'm so grateful to you for taking the time today and joining us. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.